I'm Thomas Baldrick. This is Oncology TV coverage of ASCO 2014. Happy to have with us Dr. John Sweetenham. He is the medical director at the University of Utah's Huntsman Cancer Institute. Thanks for stopping by, sir. Pleasure. Okay, so we're going to talk about the uh, phase three Athera study, and you feel like you've got some good news here. So let's talk first about the objective or purpose of this study. Sure. So patients with Hodgkin lymphoma overall, as you know, have an excellent prognosis. But for the 10 to 15 percent of patients who do not respond or relapse after their first line chemotherapy, the outcome's relatively poor. The standard treatment in that group is to undergo high dose therapy and autologous stem cell transplantation. And in general, the outcome after that treatment is a cure rate of approximately 50%. But within that group of relapsing patients, we know that there is a poorer risk group where the outcomes are actually significantly inferior. So the question posed in the Athera study was if we take that particularly poor risk group of patients with relapsed or refractory Hodgkin lymphoma, take them to an autologous stem cell transplant, does the use of brentuximab vedotin as a consolidative therapy after transplant improve their outcome? So when you went to answer that question, what did you find? So the short answer is yes, it does. So um, what we found in the Athera study was treatment with brentuximab vedotin every three weeks for one year produced a significant improvement in progression-free survival compared with placebo, and it was a placebo-controlled study. So there was clear evidence of uh, progression-free survival benefits. We have not yet seen an overall survival benefit from the study. That may emerge in subsequent years, although it may be difficult to demonstrate simply because the prognosis for patients with relapse Hodgkin's disease is generally improving. But nevertheless, the progression-free survival benefit is very striking and I think this is likely to be a practice changing result from the study. So based on that, um, what do you think is most important for physicians to understand about this study and its, and its implications? I think the most important thing is that the study was conducted in patients who had poor risk disease, so they had well documented risk factors going into their transplant which included a short duration of remission, disease which did not respond well to their second line salvage therapy, or patients who had extranodal disease at the time of their relapse. These are well documented risk factors. So the study was specifically limited to that group of patients. However, I think one of the other emerging questions is, well, if this is a treatment that works in those poor risk patients, is there any potential benefit in lower risk patients as well? We don't know that yet, so I think at the moment, many physicians may believe that they should restrict the use of this drug to those so-called poor risk patients. Hopefully over time, we'll have more data from, from lower risk patients. And I have a feeling that the drug is gonna get used in this context of uh, post-transplant consolidation using Brutantzumab vedotin. And I think it's likely that we're gonna see an increasing use in all patients with recurrent Hodgkin lymphoma who undergo an autologous transplant. So what question or questions may you seek to answer next? I think one of the important questions that we may get some in, in more data from the study with subsequent analyses, probably the big burning question is whether functional imaging uh, at the time of the transplant, prior to the transplant, can be one of the factors that would help us select those patients who may benefit from consolidation with brentuximab vedotin or may not. Now some data will be available from the study that will help to inform that, but I think that's going to be the big question really around that question of whether functional imaging should be the factor which selects whether a patient requires this consolidation or not. Well, congratulations on your findings to this point. Uh, thanks for stopping by and come back and share with us and keep us posted, would you? Thank you very much. I certainly will. Very good, sir. Thanks.